Hi, good evening uh, to everyone. Welcome to our uh, Blue Ocean Strategy webinar. <clears throat> I would first request my colleague Sagar to introduce ourselves and then uh, we'll continue with the webinar. Sagar, please go ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. I suppose everyone are having a pleasant evening on this Saturday. Though there is chaos outside, uncertainty outside, but still we have got to stay pleasant and calm inside. Uh, with this note, I welcome each and everyone over here who have uh, spared your time to learn something more. That is to uh, learn more, to earn more. In that context, let me introduce you to our panelists and Samuthana today. Samuthana Concert and Coaching, LLP, is founded by Mr. Dinakar Murthy Krishna, whom you can see on screen. Mr. Dinakar is, uh, uh, is an uh, industrial engineer graduate from BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore. Later on, he worked for a while, or sorry, not for a while, for a good time with Bosch. Earlier, Michael, now known as Bosch. He worked there across the globe, India, Germany, Brazil, USA, few other parts of Europe, and his last stint with Bosch was at Jaipur plant in India. His last assignment, in his last assignment, Mr. Dinakar was vice president of Bosch Limited. Throughout his career, what Mr. Dinakar Murthy did was create Bosch to become a world-class organization. The same thing is what later on Dinakar wanted to do once he was he moved out of Bosch. Creating world-class companies and exceptional leaders. This is what Dinakar did. And this motivated people like me, Mr. Vivek, who is on panel today, and few other consultants like Mr. Vivin, Mr. Achut Pandurangi, and few others who joined the bandwagon along with Mr. Dinakar in Samuthana. Today, I welcome you all for this series called as the Knowledge Series. Today, Mr. Dinakar is going to present his wisdom to all of us. Before I hand it over to Mr. Dinakar, let me introduce one more panelist among us. His name is Mr. Vivek. Mr. Vivek has got over three decades of experience in industrial sectors. He has been as an industrial sector into product management, marketing, and sales. He has handled in the industrial consumables division of one major US company. Now I hand over the session to Mr. Dinakar to take us through. Mr. Dinakar, all yours. So thanks a lot, uh, Sagar. And uh, once again, uh, welcome to you all. Uh, I'm uh, uh, assuming that each of you are able to uh, hear us. Uh, uh, would you please uh, uh, raise your hand in case you are not hearing and I can see in the attendee list since there are a lot of people uh, to unmute everybody would be quite a challenge. So in case you can't hear me, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, I would first uh, start talking to you about uh, Blue Ocean and then uh, hand over to Vivek for a short demonstration of uh, uh, a game, which is what we'll be talking about as part of this uh, webinar. So now, on this slide, I'm trying to depict uh, a red ocean and a blue ocean. Uh, the, the, the philosophy behind uh, blue and red ocean is uh, very simple. Uh, in an ocean where you've got a lot of uh, sharks, uh, a colony of sharks uh, generally the waters are red in color because of the prey that they catch and eat therefore each shark is supposed to be sharing the prey and uh, that that's what that makes a lot of bites on the uh, prey is what the uh, what it makes the ocean uh, red whereas the blue ocean is uh, where uh, there are not many sharks and uh, the shark is able to swim around and catch its prey at uh, leisure i would say in uh, parenthesis it's not really leisure and and there the intensity is not much reflecting this onto the market red oceans are such markets where there is a tremendous amount of competition cutthroat competition uh, pricing wars etc whereas uh, the blue ocean is a place where uh, there are not many uh, players in the market so you have a separate market uh, made for you and uh, today i'll be talking about how one could create this kind of a blue ocean let me directly go on to talking about some examples of blue ocean before I uh, talk about uh, uh, how to create a blue ocean. So let me start straight away with uh, a very old company called as Ford. Uh, Ford long, long time back uh, created the assembly lines and by creating the assembly lines, he created a market for his uh, vehicles, uh, which was very, very unique because the vehicles were uh, 
cheap, cheaper than the Rolls Royce which were being sold those days, and at the same time were uh, uh, much more uh, uh, robust because of the mass production, and uh, uh, you, the customers got a huge uh, value, and more importantly, he created a market that never existed. There are a lot of customers who would uh, otherwise not buy a vehicle because of the cost and because of the complexity and the difficulty in driving an automobile. When Ford got his vehicle, the automobile became much easier to drive, much pleasurable, and uh, a luxury item, which then started uh, being used by almost uh, uh, a lot of people in in the U.S. Then we come to the next example of uh, Canon. Again, another blue ocean. If you remember, uh, Canon was the first uh, company which brought in uh, to the market <coughs> the scanners and printers. I don't know if uh, any of you use that uh, today. I have a Canon uh, scanner, come printer. And this innovation was basically to put next to the computer on a desk uh, the ability to scan uh, documents and uh, then take take uh, photocopies of them. That was again a market which never existed. They created a new market, new market, new product, and that's how they captured the market and grew in their uh, business. When I'm talking about this, you also need to remember that any blue ocean cannot be a blue ocean for forever because moment people know that it's a blue ocean others will uh, join in because that's a nice place to be in and that would then make it uh, into a red ocean so either you continue surviving in the same red ocean or you create a new blue ocean so it's important that we are constantly evolving and creating new blue oceans that's something which is the hidden wisdom in the entire uh, philosophy here then we talk about itunes totally a revolution where uh, one could carry thousands of songs in his uh, pocket which was not possible with the Walkmans, with the other devices which were there those days. And the second thing was that uh, uh, each song could be monetized so that you are, you are talking about uh, charging a very small fee for uh, a song, which then become much more affordable. And you know the history, how iTunes uh, went on to capture the market. Then we have uh, another example, which is a, a little modern one, Airbnb, I'm sure. All of you would have heard of it. Airbnb is again another blue ocean where the market never existed. This market was created. See, when you're talking about a blue ocean, you're creating a market. You're creating a market with a product which is new, which is innovative, which is something different, where the competitors would not compete at all because you're not competing with anybody. Uh, Airbnb doesn't compete with the hotel uh, business. The hotels, uh, hotel chains uh, do their business the way they are doing now. Airbnb is only providing and, and attracting a different market segment altogether by providing uh, accommodation options in houses. So neither are they using the supply side nor the uh, existing demand side, but it's a new supply and new demand uh, model. That's the Airbnb uh, innovation, which is a blue ocean. Then we come to the next one, which is uh, called as uh, Cirque du Soleil. I don't know whether any, any one of you have heard out of this. Uh, uh, in, in uh, let us say, mid uh, 80s and early 90s, you had the circus, which was uh, being uh, uh, performed uh, throughout the world. Everywhere you had circus uh, troops doing and traveling and putting up the tents and uh, giving performances. And at the same time, there were movies. Uh, and at the same time, there were the Broadway musicals in uh, New York. So what Cirque du Soleil did was combine movie uh, with a, a, a Broadway musical and a circus. So there are a lot of acrobatics and a lot of movies because it's about story storytelling and also opera is part of uh, uh, Cirque du Soleil. Uh, Cirque du Soleil is a kind of an entertainment company which operates in most of the uh, evolved societies or developed societies and uh, they have a model of uh, duplicating uh, and they conduct uh, uh, shows. It would be something like an entertainment program for three hours or four hours and they're expensive. They're not cheaper than going to a movie, neither are they cheaper than uh, going to a Broadway musical, it's more expensive and more obviously therefore more profitable. At the same time, more entertaining too. That's Cirque du Soleil, which is a, again another blue ocean uh, example. Then we come to the next one, which is Starbucks. Uh, I'm sure all of you would have heard of Starbucks and had a coffee there. Starbucks uh, really created a totally different market of uh, uh, linking an experience with coffee drinking. It was not about drinking just a pair of, uh, just a cup of coffee. It was to uh, give an experience with uh, drinking a coffee and a place to chill out. Now, if you look at it, uh, Starbucks coffees are not cheap. Uh, neither are of uh, Cafe Coffee Day, the Indian version of uh, Starbucks, uh, more or less. So in the case of Cafe Coffee Day, not Starbucks, the coffees are cheap. 
they are not very uh, uh, what should i say uh, uh, luxuriously uh, decorated the, the interiors are quite uh, normal quite uh, average but at the same time they give a totally different experience and that's 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 the blue ocean that they created i come down here to ola which is again a different blue ocean which which was created where the model itself didn't exist absolutely a new business model and uh, this business business model created new customers created that some of the existing customers shifted to uh, ola and mostly new customers came in there because traveling by taxis became much easier <clears throat> much uh, cheaper so therefore a lot of people who would otherwise travel by bus or use their vehicles uh, shifted over to ola and now you know the story that uh, many of the youngsters wouldn't like to buy a bike at all or a school car at all they would like to either travel with a ola or a uber or a bounce which is the other blue ocean which i have shown on this slide and the last one which i'm going to talk about is duhau that's where my experience comes from duhau is the product and that we have i have invented and here i've done a lot of uh, research using the blue ocean, blue ocean concept and uh, try to understand how we could create something which can be scaled up which can be uh, uh, unique and which would not compete with the existing uh, players in the market so that's uh, uh, duhau i'll talk about that a little later but before doing that uh, let me go on to talk about the uh, steps of creating a blue ocean the first step is to create a kind of a balance scorecard or let's say a baseline for the company i'm not going to be explaining in detail what each of these uh, steps is all about for that we have a program uh, planned uh, which sagar will explain at the end so i'll just give you a very brief and talk about the baseline of any company we need to be talking about where are we starting from so first of all what products and services here in this case i am talking about a, a florist as an example to explain the concept of how to create a blue ocean first you start with the products and services then talk about the business environment of that particular market keep it in mind we are talking about florists and uh, what is the compelling tagline see in any business to succeed you need to have uh, stakeholders stakeholders are basically five which would be the customers the shareholders employees uh, business partners in society for each of them there should be some kind of a compelling tagline so that everybody come together only then the business becomes a company and then it, it grows that's that's something fundamental of any uh, uh, blue ocean uh, creation so here we are talking about taglines for uh, all the uh, segments of uh, stakeholders and the last one which is extremely important is something which you may want to note down to not this point to really identify what is the market of this particular uh, 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 company or a uh, business <clears throat> now when i say market i am not talking about market segments i am talking about the uh, uh, market segments in a different uh, from a different perspective now let me explain that uh, briefly there are totally four groups of markets when you want to create a blue ocean the first group of market would be the existing market itself existing market would be who are the ones who are buying and coming and buying from you you are existing customers then there is what is called as close non customers close non customers would be those uh, customers uh, who are not coming to your shop but maybe going to the neighbor shop but they also are potential customers but they went to the neighbor shop that is the next segment of the market the third segment of the market would be refusing non customers those customers who have a need let us say a florist is meeting the need of gifting for example so for gifting there are other alternate industries also which cater to the same uh, need of uh, gifting it could be a, 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 a souvenir or it could be a, a voucher or it could be just cash or it could be a, a travel to a different city or whatever it is so there are alternate industries so these customers intentionally refused buying the flower that means your entire industry product was refused by these uh, non customers and they went in to buy another product which met the same need that is the third segment and the fourth segment are those who don't even know that there is a possibility of buying something which can be gifted these are the four segments now these four segments are important because normally any advertisement which we think of any uh, uh, uh marketing plan or strategy that we think of normally addresses only the first two always first two is the biggest uh, target and third segment to some extent but hardly do we talk about the unexplored segment unexplored segment are those people who have never used your product but they would like to use it provided they know what this product is and what is the benefit that they are going to get that is the fourth segment uh, so this is something which you need to keep in uh, your mind and here i have listed out these four segments family friends word of mouth referrals customers going to other nearby florists customers choosing gifts or flowers and customers preparing 
uh, gifts on their own could be the fourth uh, segment who have not really gone and bought any gift at all now once the baseline is done the next step is to understand how are the assets of the various uh, key stakeholders and promoters of the business when i talk about assets we are talking about 10 scarce business resources first would be the availability of the product itself whatever you are doing if it is scarcely available let us say we talk about uh, a product like uh, lithium which is used for lithium ion batteries which is scarcely available so there's no need for any blue ocean strategy there because of the scarcity itself and there is a huge demand the gap between supply and demand is so huge that the moment you produce that it will get sold i'm not sure if any of you remember the uh, license raj in india when uh, we had to wait for uh, almost uh, four to five years to get a bajaj chetak uh, scooter and the bajaj chetak scooter used to get sold at uh, premium you know uh, because uh, people wanted to have it so whenever you have a situation like that blue oceans are not required blue oceans are required in a globalized economy where there is intense competition where there is a red ocean if there is no red ocean blue ocean is not required so relevance products and services availability of them is extremely important leadership bandwidth which is what should i say it's it's the basic because the leadership bandwidth is the one that is creating a company is the one that is building the ecosystem and having the right employees they are the uh, what should i say arms and uh, legs of the leaders so they have to be there without that the company doesn't run and building customers and clients how ready are they that's again another uh, scarce resource of, of course each of one of you understand you would have liked to have everyone as customers but doesn't happen then no know, know how which is both tacit and explicit time to implement an idea time is extremely important how fast do you have what time do you have to implement the idea then cash flow and investors for finance another extremely scarce resource very important then the ecosystem itself your partnering vendors and their uh, supplies their, their vendors and your uh, uh, partners who are going to help you in housekeeping and uh, various other uh, infrastructure maintenance activities uh, all such people would come under the ecosystem finally the physical space and lastly a society which is cooperative of your business imagine trying to do a business which nobody wants you to do in that particular location uh, then it will not be ni that nice at all i remember in the area of baswangudi where uh, <coughs> we we grew i grew up in jayanagar in bangalore uh, Baswangudi is not far from uh, Jainagar. In Baswangudi area, if there would be a liquor shop, then it would get shut down very fast because the residents didn't want any liquor shop there. Baswangudi especially. But nowadays it has changed. I'm talking about 70s. Okay. <laughs> so now 80s, it is different. It started changing and now it is a different story altogether. Even McDonald's is there in Baswangudi. A very, very strange situation. Now, because McDonald's captured that fourth group, which is the non customers who never had taste had, had the idea of going out and eating out somewhere started eating mcdonald's because they came to uh, baswangudi and gandhi bazaar so once you have listed out these scarce resources amongst your uh, team it is important to start talking about the availability when i say availability is it something that you can uh, pick up uh, from uh, tomorrow itself from the next one hour itself or is it something which is in the pipeline being used by somebody else and then you you, you can release it for this project at a later time based on that you do an assessment and you get a graph like this uh, which is uh, uh, a visual representation of as to which resource is abundantly available for example uh, in, in in our case uh, the availability of uh, ecosystem is very good there's not a problem at all a lot of people are there it's not at all a hindrance for us and uh, availability of right employees for a florist is not that critical uh, whereas maybe a little more complicated uh, uh, business a uh, little more uh, what should i say higher end of the supply chain uh, it may be a little uh, challenging so this assessment you do and once this is this is basically to again understand the overall context of the company once this is done then we talk about the core competencies of the organization these are competencies also can be thought of as assets but basically their skills they are acquired uh, uh, and demonstrated and uh, proven uh, uh, performance of the company of the uh, group or the team uh, in this case i have listed out three which would be ikaban arrangement and service uh, mindset and supply chain ecosystem which is existing for this particular uh, company a florist now here you can see that you do an assessment on three topics relevance importance to the uh, business then uh, ready availability uh, and the copying effort how easily can somebody copy now if you see the score for uh, supply chain is one because here it's not that difficult all you need to do is just stand in front of the florist find out who is delivering the uh, flats and uh, overall people coming and going out uh, then within no time you can go to the same chap and buy the same uh, flower you know so it's not something very complex or let us say if you have a supply chain where you have a product coming from uh, 
uh, Germany and then uh, uh, another component coming from Dubai and one more from US and all the three are then getting sub-assembled somewhere in uh, Turkey and then you get the items of, from Turkey as well as from these four countries. Such a product will have a tremendous complexity in its supply chain. So it's not easy to duplicate it. The, the copying effort is much more uh, difficult. So that's the assessment which we do. Again, this is again to understand the background, the <coughs> foundation of the company. Once we have done this, then we go to the next one. Now we have got everybody on the same page. We know <coughs> what our business uh, environment is. We know what our uh, scarce resources are. We know what our competencies are. And then we go to the next one, where we start talking about the market itself. Now, now Here comes the biggest question. Uh, or the sales uh, guys now in, the, in, in this in this case who are the ones who are closest to the customers to identify and understand what are the decision factors of any customer why would a customer buy a when, when the customer wants to buy a flower in this case flower because i'm talking about flower as an example what are the decision factors what does he make, uh, make what does he uh, uh, <coughs> base his or her decision on here i've listed four price uh, speed of service, customer engagement, and design. These are the four factors. For a different business, it will be different. That is something which we need to understand. And once it is done, then we try to give the relative importance, which is uh, more important, less important. So here, uh, the importance also you can see in that column. After that, you do an assessment of uh, uh, the uh, ABC florist, which is the company which you're talking about here. The roadside florist could be the other side of uh, other competitive business and uh, market florist once who are in uh, big markets and the mall for this once florists who are in the malls these are the let us say three competitors to us we need to identify who the competitors are and try to understand where do we stand when it comes to all these four factors who is better than us now there are multiple ways of doing it uh, in a company one is we could do a self-assessment first in many companies where uh, uh, we have worked uh, not specifically on blue ocean but uh, as part of the do how game which i'll come and uh, talk to you about uh, later uh, their self assessment is done in the first go and after that uh, some kind of a survey is done where uh, <clears throat> these questions are put in the customer survey satisfaction survey everybody is doing that and then you get an idea as to who is better than you uh, who is the best in the market you know whom to benchmark so based on that this analysis can be done this analysis on the right shows you as to where you stand now the company which you're talking about is abc flores which is the violet color here i don't know whether you can see the colors or not i will just mark the violet color here so that uh, you can uh, uh, make a note of that uh, violet color is this one so i can just mark the violet color so this black the one with the black line is the company which you're talking about so there you just have a look that uh, the uh, uh, this particular black line is more or less identical to the other uh, uh, companies right there is nothing which is unique there do you see any unique any differentiation so if that is the case how will anybody come and buy the product so that is the first <coughs> analysis of the market to understand where do we stand in the market now we go in a little more into the depth the next uh, deep dive which is uh, going to be a little more uh, exhaustive i take a couple of minutes uh, more to explain that <coughs> now we need to understand how the market is behaving that is the core of uh, one of one of the core elements of uh, blue ocean strategy to understand how the market is behaving now here we look at multiple factors first is uh, what are the alternate industries which are catering to the same need like as mentioned in the earlier uh, discussion gift items gift vouchers money envelopes could be the uh, alternate industries and then on the right side here to identify what is the main driver for the for a customer to go to that particular alternate industry to meet his need or her need now in the case of gift items the uh, uh, driver could be that the person who's buying wants to have something which can be retained for a long time uh, gift vouchers somebody who's buying may have a intention of really giving the flexibility for the person who is gifted to buy the brand of his choice right or money envelopes could be maybe to some kind of an obligation. You went to the marriage and you're just walking in the queue, a lot of people giving gifts and you don't know what to do. So you just picked up an envelope, put some money and hand it over. Could be one, one, one possibility. Now, it's important to identify which are the alternate industries meeting the same need and why do customers make that choice? Then comes the next one, which are the market segments? In this case, I'm not talking about the <clears throat> market segments which I spoke to you in the first uh, uh, slide. Here we're talking about market segments which would really define the way they live 
it could be with the lifestyle depending on the product in this case since it's a polaris we're talking about for lifestyle uh, let us say we talk about low, lower income lower middle class middle class higher middle class and higher income group so each of these categories what is their uh, uh, fundamental driver when they are buying a flower okay when they are when they are meeting the need sorry not the flower when they are buying <clears throat> something to meet that need of giving a gift for a higher income group it could be brand and collectibles for uh, 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 middle class it could be cost and usage that means you give a gift which can be used now it's not that you just keep it in your showcase and then uh, be done with it so so this is something which is important to understand then comes the next one what is the buying chain that means somebody bought the flower and after that what it happened to the flower then where did it go that entire chain is something which we need to understand and try to understand what are the basic needs and drivers how would the each person in that buying chain look at the particular product or the service that they just bought what is their uh, value to that you know that's something which we need to take recipient wants to take care in selection first impact is something which is uh, interested the family is interested in usage friends may be in image and then next one would be talk about which add ons are required for your product and service for that to be used for that to be uh, uh, put to use in this case we need a flower vase and a water and what is the basic uh, benefit of that display and retention and then talk about the next one uh, which is the accepted limitations in the market for that particular product or service in this case the accepted limitation is that you need to dispose it off after some time when you buy a flower right so here what could be done to uh come over that that uh, that uh, barrier would be to use of uh, dry or artificial flowers which then you don't need to dispose it off right that's a limitation how do you break that limitation then talk about the functional emotional appeal if you increase the functional appeal what's going to happen if you increase the emotional appeal what's going to happen then finally talk about the development over time and what would happen over time maybe online gifting will 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 come through now once you have done this then with this sheet and the earlier documents which you have done uh using your uh, 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 your uh, experience and your uh, sixth sense your common sense and uh, all this information put everything on the board and then talk about what could be the differentiating factors the additional differentiation which can be done these are called as the divergence hints now here we list out the divergence hints and talk about which market segments will these divergence hints cater to <clears throat> m is the, the existing market tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 the one which i explained in the slide number 1 so once we have done that now we have a more or less an idea as to what direction we could go to and then how can it be uh, 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 how can a blue ocean be created now we come to the market canvas again and when we do this in this case the market canvas shows that these add add-ons which we have put on here these add-ons have been derived with a lot of uh, uh, logic and system so it's not something which just came up as a fluke and these uh, uh add ons can be maintained by us maybe in, in our locality <clears throat> this florist can maintain this for some time and somebody will copy it because these add ons are not something which can last for a long time okay so once you have done this uh, for example uh, uh, there are various uh, add ons here long retention of arrangements then on time online sale and delivery dry flowers ikebana with fragrance for first impact uh, drive in facilities all these things could be unique ones which the florist can have, offer to the customers with which he or she can get more customers that is the blue ocean uh, but this blue ocean i repeat again will not last for long moment moment other see that something is happening here you see that uh, a shark is uh, in a blue ocean automatically the others will come there and then start uh, capturing the space so we need to constantly keep inventing it's not about doing a blue ocean now and forgetting in my opinion at least once every uh, six months in in today's uh, or once a quarter in today's post covid situation i would imagine every quarter we should be reviewing our overall blue ocean uh, strategy because uh, the uh, world is going to be extremely uh, uncertain with lot of uh, uh, changes and lot of uh, 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 vulnerability and lot of uncertainty therefore it's important that we keep reviewing this quite uh, often now this is more or less the idea and once this is done the next steps would be to go into the depth to find out if these uh, ideas make sense how much is the value what is the cost of that how are we going to implement that and what what would be the next steps how would we go about uh, rolling it out and how would we launch it and what kind of a business model all that comes later which i am not going to be dealing in today's uh, uh, web workshop but now what i want to do is give you an example as to how what we have done in doha this is our product uh, doha basically is a product which gets Dimka? people to think Dimka? differently yeah 
Uh, your slide is frozen. Now it's uh, showing or not shown? If yeah, you want, okay. I have this presentation no, ready. No, no, I can. No, no, no. Okay. I, um, no, I, I'm fine with that. Right. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. So getting people thinking uh, differently for improving uh, uh, stagnating performance is what our core value proposition is. Uh, and how do we do that is something which I want to explain in the next uh, slides. Only for you to get an idea, how did we arrive at this? Here we are talking about uh, the uh, uh, way the brain works. Okay. Uh, why is it required? Because uh, uh, when we created this blue ocean, one of the biggest challenges we had was to understand why is it that there are a lot of training programs and a lot of uh, interventions in the market, but still we have many ideas, great ideas from uh, decades earlier, which have not been implemented. Uh, today morning, I was talking to Mr. Chandramoli. He will come later as part of our uh, game to participate in the game. Uh, so Chandramoli is uh, very passionate about Kaizen. Uh, the, 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 the concept of continuous improvement or continual improvement and continual improvement came into vogue sometime in 1980s, right? How is it that even today uh, there is so much amount of uh, uh, thirst and uh, need for this knowledge and the penetration is so low despite so many programs and that's something which really bothered us and that's the place where we focus to really create our blue ocean. Uh, one of the main things is uh, our brain capt captures all our experiences and emotions uh, as memories. Some memories are nice, some neutral, and some uh, ugly. Based on these memories, our brain develops a unique framework as a filter to define our mindset, which is the way we perceive reality, connect the dots, and thinking to establish the cause and effect, balancing the benefits and effort, or going by the gut for deciding, and acting for survival, progeny, belonging, and evolving, and for evolving life. So this is mindset, and you do how basically creates an agile mindset, which is a mindset where it continuously changes the filter from the violet one to the uh, yellow one or the or the cream one which is depicted in this uh, picture uh, in this uh, slide so this shift is what that happens and that's what uh, duo is all about how does that happen because of us concentrating only in the objective domain for those of you who are uh, aware of the uh, learning taxonomy there are three domains of learning one is the cognitive learning which is the main focus in all the schools colleges universities and uh, whichever educational institution in the world mainly talks about cognitive domain, but for some exceptions in the US, uh, Europe, and uh, Japan, and maybe in Australia too, where the uh, affective domain also is, uh, uh, is, is addressed, but otherwise majority, 99.99% of the educational institutions talk only about the cognitive domain, where it is mainly about analyzing, evaluating, creating, you know, understanding the cause and effect. That's, that's a fundamental goal of uh, cognitive domain. And uh, the psychomotor domain is about understanding, a, uh, developing a motor skill, uh, a muscle memory. I would call the simplest psychomotor skill is to write A, B, C, D. So today you can close your eyes without any problem, write A, B, C, D. Even in darkness, you can write your name. You can sign in darkness. Uh, or uh, the next little more complex one would be maybe to, to walk, uh, another psychomotor uh, skill. And a uh, little more complex would be to ride a bike. More complex would be to ride a car. Uh, these are all psychomotor skills where there is uh, thinking and action involved whereas effective domain where there is not almost nothing available in the entire world today is about receiving information responding appropriately to that information then valuing whatever information whatever learning i have and organizing our internal existing values and uh, uh, information and uh, prioritizing which is important which is not important and finally once that is done internalizing the newly learned learning that is the effective domain. So do how works basically in this domain. And uh, next, blue ocean aspect is uh, do how has extremely short sessions with large groups. That's the uh, example which you will uh, witness live now. Reach to all markets with uh, through the web app. And uh, mark all markets mean I'm talking about tier one, tier two, tier three. Multiple channels which could be face to face, uh, webinar or software as a service, and a very high level of return of investment based on whatever we have understood from our existing customers. So with this, uh, I would invite you to experience the do-how game, which would be uh, facilitated by my colleague uh, Vivek Palsule. Uh, we are doing this only to un for you to understand what is the power a blue ocean can uh, uh, unleash 
in the uh, industry and then we get back to the blue ocean uh, uh, further with uh, sagar uh, taking over now uh, vivek over to you please i have unmuted mr chandramouli then uh, chandramouli hi welcome i invite you to please be part of our do our game vivek you can take over yeah you need to show me uh, give me the share presentation rights yeah already given yeah okay good evening to you uh, to all of you my name is vivek vivek parsule sagar has already introduced you i welcome you all from my side uh, now i'm going to talk to you about do how uh, as dinkar expressed this is a very unique experience uh, which is about do how uh, it's a web app where one needs to log in into it and once one logs in into it there are multiple games and each of these games as you will be seeing it will be highly customized game and uh, played for a particular purpose as you can see it from here these are different games for each company or each experience there will be a different game today we are going to play a uh, uh, sharpening the uh, personal and marketing sales skills webinar which will be also a part of our do how uh, knowledge series for blue ocean strategy in segment 4 so what i would like to do is i would like to invite first me and dinkar would play one or two rounds and once me and dinkar plays the round then we will invite mr chandramauli and mr manoj kabre to <coughs> to start play along with us for a few rounds so now let's talk about Uh, over to you, Mr. Dinkar. Uh, as a first task, uh, first you need to talk about giving with confidence. Explore the opportunity unconditionally. Give help to your stakeholders using the hint. Nominating stakeholders for events, programs of interest. Over to you, Mr. Dinkar. Yeah. So thanks a lot, uh, Vivek. Uh, it's very important as a salesperson. Uh, it's it's most important to really. Uh, give something to all the most val valuable people so that the trust gets built up it's not in the uh, with any uh, intention of uh, really uh, what should i say uh, manipulating or anything like that but the fundamental process of giving something to somebody is uh, uh, quite natural for a sales and uh, marketing uh, uh, executive and that's what happens uh, uh, in this case and when i'm talking about uh, opportunities to unconditionally give uh, to our stakeholders using the hint nominating stakeholders for events and programs Uh, i would like to say that uh, today in this uh, panel uh, i've already spoken to mr chandramouli he is interested in organizing is in in, in uh, using our platform for uh, talking about some some of some of the topics of his expertise so anybody is uh, welcome uh, i would be more than happy to offer our uh, uh, services we have got a webinar uh, platform and uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, subscription which we have and uh, we we definitely have some uh, uh, technology integrations done so we could definitely uh, offer this as a option and that that's something which i have already done morning i spoke to mr chandramouli uh, he would be doing a program on uh, kaizen in the next uh, two weeks uh, so so something like this is what i would do to really uh, nominate uh, stakeholders for events and programs one way the other way is uh, whenever there is an event which is being organized whether it's from bcic or from cii or from uh, uh, another uh, trainer or another uh, coach or consultant then it's important that we can identify who in our group Uh, would benefit from this and then uh, ask them to participate in these programs like i recently did with uh, mr uh, vivek and uh, uh, vivin for participating in a toc program organized by a french uh, uh, consultant whom i know so thank you so much vivek yeah thank you now as dinkar was explaining there are two types of uh, uh, activities which we need to do first activity was the individual activity and the second activity is a decision task which has to be done by team now what i would i like to uh, suggest uh, people specifically like manoj kabre mr chandramauli and others too can contribute you can go to your chat window <clears throat> and going to the chat window you need to select uh, basically all uh, people so that uh, you are able to send it to all attendees and then based on that you need to score mr dinkar 
for his or her sense of humor on scale of one to five. Now, why it is very critical for us to score? Because when we are scoring, in this particular case, there are three actions which are happening. First is we are judging ourselves as to how did that person perform and how would I have performed with respect to that person. So there is always a comparison and a judgment. And lastly, but not the least, we always get to the who is the best in the world and with respect to that best in the world, how this person has performed. And this judgment is not about the person or an individual, but only one trait of leadership, which is his sense of humor. So as you will see, that sense of humor is a very, very important uh, activity which we need to really play across here because uh, uh, that's a, one of the important traits. So I think so if let's wait for the people to score. Has anybody scored? I don't think so anybody scored. So, okay, let's go to the next task, maybe possibly. Now, I would like to talk yeah, wait, wait, basically, just hold on. Wait, hold on, please. Yeah, please yeah. go on. Uh, am I supposed to score on the on the chat or uh, orally on the chat? Is it? You can, you can do orally on also. the chat. On the chat is what we do. Now you can do orally since you already asked. You can do orally. It's about whenever whatever I explain. Was there any content of humor in that? Because sales oh, guys have to be humorous. They cannot be very straight. Uh, very strict okay, guys. Okay. And one is low and five is high, right? Yes. 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 You can be honest, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's all objective. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, you're I only judging him on sense of humor. Ah, I, yeah, I would yeah. be judging myself, but one is what I would imagine because I was not. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately I didn't have a zero there. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sense of humor. <laughs> that is a great no, sense of humor. <laughs> that is even okay. better sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, okay. Vivek, I think we can do only one round, I say, because. Uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can can understand that. Maybe what I would like to uh, invite is invite Mr. Manoj Kabre to talk about or suggest with relevance, think and suggest best way of getting well wishers endorsed. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Vivek and uh, Dinkar. I think nice to connect with you. Are you able to hear me? And before you talk, oh, just I would request you to introduce yourself, Manoj. Okay. So I am Manoj Kabre. I am uh, working with a company called Indo Mim, which is a manufacturing company. And uh, we have been in business for about 20 years and we are the world's largest company in this field. I work with this company as vice president marketing. And I'm taking care of regions like Asia Pac and some parts of Europe in addition to India. Uh, in addition, I am also a Rotarian. So that's another social kind of introduction from my side. Yeah. So Vivek, also, you want to uh, go? I would like to add on saying that you are also a very a strong uh, advocate of mentors. You have done a lot of job in uh, getting mentors together. Uh, you are mentor. Uh, program you know that's that's something which is very very popular across india i'm sure and maybe even the world <laughs> no, no, thanks yeah vivek can you repeat what you wanted me to look at yeah on the screen you will be able to see that you need to suggest with relevance so think uh -huh. and suggest the best way of getting well well wishers endorsed which is a quite important thing in sales and marketing right in my mind, testimony would be the best way to get get endorsement, you know, and uh, I, I have always seen that storytelling is one of the best medium in uh, sales and marketing to get your point understood by the recipient, right? So the best would be to have a kind of um, testimony or a kind of real life example, because that I think hits the target audience very well. Okay, thank you very much for your contribution, Manoj. Now let's go to the next task. And in this task, I would request Mr. Dinkar Chandramauli also to communicate uh, or talk to uh, rate Mr. Manoj Kabre on spontaneity and confidence on scale of one to 
five along with improvement recommendations in case if you are not able to find chat window you are free to uh, say it verbally too as you can see these are different traits of leaderships as a salesperson you need to be spontaneous you need to have confidence in whatever you are speaking earlier we were talking about sense of humor and different traits you get related so mr chandramauli you would like to verbally say it how would you like to go about yeah. it i think manoj i will give you on spontaneity and confidence four out of five so oh, great and any recommendations for improvement mm. not i'm not able to think anything now it's okay i pass it yeah in fact uh, dinkar has already given it in the chat window he has said it is four and spontaneity and confidence was very good another personal example would have made it better now i would like to go with one more round and invite mr chandra mauli to uh, first mr chandra mauli i would love to introduce yourself and then talk about channel with enthusiasm explain how are you reaching out to your potential customers or client using exhibitions and fairs over to you mr chandra mauli okay thank you very much uh, well we, when we go to the exhibitions and fairs and i want to get a potential customer there i have uh, to send Ramon, an advance just a, short, just a short interruption please introduce yourself first who oh, is it okay yeah you are um, one of the best uh, networkers and leaders i have met <laughs> well i think uh, I not achieved much uh, my name is an chandramauli and i used to work for uh, machine tool industry in the last 15 years uh, ceo of makino and managing director of starag i am on the board of few companies like starag and also contributing to the various uh, forums like bangalore chamber cai capital goods skill council aerospace skill council dhi samarth udyog so on and so forth i am very passionate about quality management systems kaizen and 5s and what not and uh, would like to uh, contribute from whatever i learned over the last four decades of my work experience okay coming back to the question i think the most important thing is to uh, convey the benefits and value of my product for example the machine tool i was holding much before the exhibitions and fairs commence uh, with a few examples and a few photographs and uh, solutions the underline the word solutions to the problems of a particular customer and ensure that he turns up in the exhibition and demonstrate underline demonstrate the benefits in 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 actually uh, conducting that particular uh, task and convince him and even before he gets out of the exhibition he plays a, a inquiry for a particular product let's say machine tool and this i would like to convince a potential customer well before the exhibition starts thank you okay great thank you very much mr chandramauli for your contribution uh what happens whenever it's happening is that whenever you see a contextual hint in our mind we are continuously seeing and talking about what it is at the same time we are also listening from others even though we are not contributing we are hearing it internally and listening from others that's how the collaboration also happens during these things now uh, i would request manoj kabre denkar to rate mr chandramauli on scale of 1 to 5 on his creativity and out of box thinking uh, along with improvements for recommendations as you have seen here there are different uh, uh, traits which are happening and you are getting rated on so that that also emphasizes upon us what is the importance of different traits to have be uh, while we develop ourselves into the next leadership positions so this is now we need to rate mr uh chandra mauli on creativity and out of box thinking mr manoj kabre you would like to uh, give in the chat window or would like to verbally say it yeah i think i can i can verbally say i would uh, i would like to rate 3 uh, and uh, would be suggesting that out of the box thinking probably could be recited thank you mr dinkar okay dinkar has already posted in the chat window uh, where he said that the approach was out of the box but a recent experience would have been good so this is how the game continues 
due to lack of uh, time, we'll need to end the game now. And I will like to hand it over to Mr. Dinkar again for uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the next part of the presentations. Over to you, Dinkar. So thanks a lot, uh, Vivek. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's get back to the uh, presentation. I'd left, uh, uh, I, I'd stopped at this uh, where we said uh, we will experience the do how game. And now I'll hand over to Sagar to continue the remaining part of the presentation. I, I'll come back again for the Q&A. I see quite a few comments here. We'll answer that during the Q&A. Yeah, Sagar, please. Good. Uh, thank you, uh, Vivek and Dinakar. Uh, dear participants, what you experience today is one of those blue ocean method that we evolved out of uh, for being in this space of consultant coaching like how uh, dinakar explained initially about various other uh, blue ocean companies that they created for themselves the same thing is what do how also does for themselves we created a whole new se segment for ourselves in the space of consultant coaching now that you ex you've got an example of how to create blue ocean and you saw an example live demo of a game what do how or through do how samuthana consult and coaching offers to all of us is a five uh, weekend ex <clears throat> workshop or webinar for this whole event now what we have in this five uh, day is we have got two hours each for learning sections like foundation where your topics are going to be business baselines assets and core competencies and you will be given an assignment to prepare all this for your own company if you are an entrepreneur or even if you are employed in the second week what we will be learning is differentiation again for two hours where you will be learning about competition and market again you will be preparing assignments for these assignments our panelists which include uh, mr dinakar vivek and few other from the industry to look into your assignments and guide you accordingly the third week is going to be about feasibility learning about feasibility what is the value that you are going to bring with your ideas or with your market then we are going to learn about the costing or the cost and the focus area for your ideas or businesses or even if you are employed in your functions then you are going to again prepare assignments which are going to be assessed online by these gentlemen the last two sessions are going to have an experience session like how you just saw the panelists doing that is a do how game specifically designed for sharpening personal marketing and sales skills this is for creating the uh, leader in you for sales and this is going to be a, a online do have a game session where you are going to analyze and validate all the insights uh, as, as the insights generated these are going to be validated by these industry veterans and kind of mentoring is what is going to happen and the last one is going to be deployment now what do you do after learning all this both the didactic and the socratic way you are going to create strategies you are going to create routines and you're going to create the planning or that is you're going to do the planning of this and then deploy directly with this is how the whole workshop is planned what is what is that that we are having as a program detail we are here for do, do through the do how we are creating the blue ocean uh, creating blue ocean for your own business or your functions five sessions of two hours duration each explanation of the intent followed by question and answers <clears throat> from, that are going to be posed by you email review of the assignments discussion and one on one to one coaching is not included in this this is going to be including only the online review of assignments the whole course package is charged at around 75 dollars per head for this whole five sessions so this is what uh, we are bringing up about please do visit this website uh, that is the link what we have given for looking at what all do we have to offer you can select sales or revenue to book the blue ocean blue ocean uh, course for yourself i hope that all of you have enjoyed learned a lot in this knowledge series and also got a live example of how duo itself is a blue ocean and you've also got a generic explanation about how a flower is himself 
can create a blue ocean for himself. So thanks a lot, Sagar. Thank you very much. And now uh, we uh, go in for the Q and A. Uh, now I first answer some of the questions which are uh, put up here in the in the question Q and A box. Otherwise, others can please enter their uh, questions here. Uh, first was uh, by Mr. Uh, Bala Subramaniam. Uh, he asked, uh, Sir, how about Swiggy? Uh, he has already left, but still I'll answer. It could be useful to the others. Uh, a uh, Swiggy, I am not sure if it's a blue ocean because a uh, uh, Swiggy is something which uh, mainly uh, didn't add any value. Uh, if you look at it, uh, any blue ocean adds value. Value means uh, any blue ocean is going to increase the price normally and uh, the customer sees a phenomenal value. In this case, the value was definitely there, but I'm not very sure because this value didn't come because of the food price going up. You know, when you when you create a blue ocean, generally the value of that particular product increases. In uh, Swiggy, what happened was the uh, 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 delivery happened, and that delivery was absorbed. Cost was absorbed by the restaurant owners, uh, so the uh, end customer didn't really uh, see that as an added value to pay more money. And uh, that may not be the blue ocean, is in my opinion. But of course, it's something which is extremely uh, innovative. There is no doubt at all on that. Uh, then there is one more question uh, coming up here. Uh, uh, how do you analyze that any industry has a blue ocean strategy, Vishnu Ardhan? Uh, no, it, uh, you, it, it depends on the industry. See, if you are in an industry where your competition is very, very uh, uh, negligible and you are able to uh, get the prices that you want uh, or where you feel you are comfortable as an investor. I remember going to one, uh, one of the entrepreneurs uh, along with a client of mine. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just share this example because it's interesting for you to get the idea of this uh, uh, from, from the context from where I am coming. So we went there, and uh, the idea was this: my client was a contract manufacturing company, and he was trying to negotiate with another product development company uh, to really take over their product manufacturing as a, a kind of a turnkey project for their entire life cycle. That means they would design the product, and this company would manufacture those products. That was the idea. So we went there, and then. Uh, uh, this company where uh, we went to, they were uh, talking about uh, uh, making sure that uh, the, the, the price that would be given for this contract manufacturing company would be the labor cost uh, plus maybe 15% and uh, the material cost would be as per their uh, assessment. So if that happens, then the overall uh, uh, return on investment for my client, who is a contract manufacturing company, uh, would be not even uh, three to four percent a year, which is less than what you get in a fixed deposit, right? So blue ocean is something a company can be in a blue ocean when you are able to get a very very high return on investment, and that return on investment comes not because you are uh, 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 really bulldozing the customers, because in this today's market you are in a position to price the products in such a way that the customer sees value. And you're also able to get a comfortable margin for having taken the risk and started a business. So I would imagine how do you analyze? The first answer is to look at the uh, ROI of the company. If it is very high, then it's a blue ocean company. And also the consistency of this ROI, not just uh, 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 for, for a couple of uh, years. Uh, Intel definitely is a blue ocean company. Bosch, where I worked, is an outstanding blue ocean company. Uh, I remember now Bosch must be 135 years old. Never in the history has Bosch made any loss in uh, uh, on a global scale. You know, but Bosch has made reasonable profits in Germany on a global scale. About five percent is what I would imagine as the more or less uh, guideline, but has never declared loss, and that's something which is phenomenal, right? For 135 years, Tata's. There are a lot of companies who have really gone into markets which never existed. That is Blue Ocean. Uh, thanks for the enlightening session. Okay, that is good. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, what about uh, Revolt e-bikes? Yeah, e-bikes also are, are definitely a blue ocean, but uh, you look at it like this: by getting it, getting that product or service into the market, uh, have you been able to generate exceptional value to the customer? And and the company or service uh, or, or the entity which is providing that value is also able to accept, generate exceptional value to the shareholders. So both these questions have to be answered. If the answer is yes, then it's definitely a blue ocean. Uh, so any other, uh, these are the questions which came in the question window. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll now unmute everybody. If you want, you can uh, ask have, any question. I have one question. Vikram, yeah, please I have one question. Molly. Please go on. Uh, I put it in the tick box just now. Uh, yeah. In the context of the corona and the COVID, 
do yeah. you expect some new blue ocean opportunities to emerge everybody is talking yeah, about you know working out of working out of home and so many things yeah obviously do you expect some yeah. new business new blue ocean businesses to emerge if, yeah, if so obviously what would yeah. be your prediction in terms of uh, opportunities see i feel uh, first thing is uh, the the uh, people to people contact you know you look at the way the conferences are held the way the seminars are held today training programs held that will change have a totally different landscape in the coming uh, coming days it's already started changing and i see the uh, uh, usage of online live events live discussions live uh, uh, conferences like what we are doing here will increase significantly so my assessment is that uh, the industry which is into telecom and such uh, teleconferencing facilities uh, will have a huge uh, Uh, increase not only in the uh, metros but also into the rural areas which means that the need for broadband will increase significantly because if you need to have a video call the way we are having today with uh, uninterrupted connectivity you need to have a broadband connection otherwise it won't work so that's again mm-hmm. another sorry area where it dinkar sorry to interrupt yeah, uh, you made a very good very good suggestion about the opportunity but suddenly it will become a red ocean because everybody will try to jump in on the shark eating shark and everybody is now webinar has become a uh, fashion now everybody is doing it and uh, working out of home tcs we pro everybody will talk about how will somebody differentiate and be the only shark in that blue ocean see like uh, you you look at it even the, that particular uh, uh, market the delivery will be very very critical it's not the content and when you're talking about delivery there are a lot of uh, new uh, technologies available today i'm talk- from the technology perspective Uh, to use what is called as a breakout room i don't know whether you heard of that uh, similar to what we do in uh, conference halls we could do that in uh, 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 the 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 uh, uh, telecon also and that's something which we do uh, because we have a method which can do that i'll just uh, take a minute to show you that uh, so what i wanted to say was there are definitely opportunities to explore how one could uh, create uh, blue oceans even in this uh, space it's only a question yeah, of uh, while you are searching uh, i would like to add to what you said mr chandramouli one what you are saying is true there are all of a sudden too many webinars happening all over but what type of webinars are happening one is the content and who is delivering that obviously is important as mr dinkar suggested but what is more critical is all those ca- uh, seminars or webinars are happening the didactic way which means that only the speaker is speaking while unless until you innovate a new thing which uh, today we did not experience it or open it out to uh, the entire public but the what web workshops we had we talk only for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or uh, 15% of the time rest 85% of the time people speak in the game which we had shown so every participant uh, is able to speak as now dinkar will be explaining in this slide go on dinkar yeah so here if you see in a, a conference hall you could divide the conference group into smaller by putting in round tables so similarly we could do it in the webinar also which is something which we do you divide it into smaller groups for them to discuss and come back together so like that lot of lot of such possibilities are there at the same time i agree with you this is much easier to copy definitely compared to what happens otherwise and uh, uh, the need for people to be more agile is huge now when i say agile that's our topic for the next week if any of you want to join please do that uh, next saturday the same time agile mindset the need for developing an agile mindset is extremely huge what is agile mindset it is basically the ability to adopt yourself to the situation and then uh, get yourself going now uh, if if you have to do that then the fundamental some fundamental perceptions have to change in the organizations day before yesterday when we were doing our duo workshop in the evening one of the managers very senior managers asked me that look uh, 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 don't you think that leadership is something which is more suitable for the top of the man- companies top leadership of the company and uh, for the lower levels uh, shouldn't they be more managers you know and 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 that, that's the fundamental shift has to happen because in the agile mindset if you have to really survive this uh, intensely uncertain uh, environment we need to be developing people who are both leaders and managers at all levels in the organization because the guy at the lowest lower most level cannot be only uh, using his uh, resources as uh, headcount as people with two hands 
you know but he should be basically getting them to inspire getting them to think so that happens only if you are a leader right uh, mr chandramouli so like that there are a lot of opportunities which will come up and the other one which uh, i feel will also happen we have been uh, there is also a blog in our uh, website you can also have a look uh, uh, see the the the, the pharma industry will uh, really take off the way you deliver medicines will change the way the tests are done will change so for all these things uh, one need to understand the context and then uh, uh, define the limits to create a blue ocean that is practical in nature otherwise we'll be only talking uh, uh, in the in the air uh, dinakar i would uh, want to add to what uh, mr chandramouli hinted at the question uh, mr chandramouli as uh, the experience over the past two uh, months uh, this is going to be the new norm we were uh, getting into an uh, economy of experience we were getting into the experience economy like ola or those kind uh, now we are going to get into an experience economy but this experience economy will be more towards the need experience economy the investments the development everything is going to start becoming the need so, so your your hint about this uh, blue ocean suddenly is going to become red ocean but like how dinakar hinted the one who is going to deliver see we have got various web conferences video conferences are happening but there still there are only one or two which even with few flaws are the most preferred ones so like that this now be has become a need the video conference has become a need but the guy who is going to deliver a best experience is what is going to stay over there so likewise the three four sectors that are going to look at a huge number of investments in the near future one is going to be the healthcare uh, the medical facilities which are which is going to become the need agritech is going to become the second need then the third one is going to become these video conferences or these edtech companies edtech companies especially the way that how fusions are done the way that how classes are going to be done is going to change these are the uh, three to four sector the fourth one is going to be the media which is going to uh, change a little different way and these are going to become the new basics needs and the way that people are going to consume and the way that people are going to produce this and deliver that is what is going to co convert them from red to blue blue to red again yeah. I hope Sagar, I think work. I think there are some more questions here. I would like to address yeah. them. First is uh, there is one question from uh, uh, Dasari. Oh, hi Dasari, how are you? I did realize that you were there on the webinar. Uh, what about Tesla? Is it a blue ocean? Of course, it's a blue ocean. Tesla is something which is different because Tesla came up with a solution, a technological solution for extending the battery life, which was phenomenal. And and the second is the uh, uh, performance of the vehicle which also was phenomenal so definitely that's a blue ocean and that's the reason why they are able to price the vehicles like that the way they, they are doing uh, then uh, there is one question from mr srinivasan namanithan post covid online coaching will fall under blue ocean i don't know online coaching has always been there uh, uh, so i don't think uh, that that would really definitely it would be a different uh, model if the coach whoever who is uh, uh, running these programs uh, comes up with something which is uh, different something where uh, you really uh, uh, maybe you are you are in a position to uh, track or uh, enable the participant to be in contact with the coach on a real time basis through some app uh, which uh, could be uh, some kind of a, a monitoring which can happen some kind of a, uh, uh, some kind of a analysis as to what's happening at each point of the day you know if that kind of a feedback can come back to the coach if he's an executive coach if it is maths coaching or uh, uh, science coaching uh, can we think of an app because technology is necessary because a moment to talk about a environment where man to man people to people contact will reduce and some kind of a technology enabled solution either something similar to what byju has done where you are able to give the uh, customers an experience of constantly uh, uh, staying on touch that's something which is important and deepa shukla Hi, Deepa. Uh, you asked the question: How can we measure upcoming challenges uh, through blue ocean uh, strategy? Yeah. So when you are talking about the topic of development over time, I spoke about that in the uh, slide number four or five. Uh, as, as when you do the analysis, of the market. So there you write down all kinds of uh, challenges that are going to be coming up in the future based on your existing wisdom. And uh, beyond that, definitely uh, more number of people involved in this because blue ocean strategy cannot be developed by one single individual it has to be a collective effort and that's where the assets come into picture to really get people to start thinking and where people with agile mindset participate together because otherwise you will not be ready to listen to other person at all uh, in during the two hour workshops which you do every day uh, we ask people to explain 
what the other person would be thinking when it comes to the current reality when it comes to uh, decision making when it comes to uh, 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 thinking that is analyzing the cause and effect and you believe me only 5% of the entire world whomever we speak to are capable of talking about that in real in in in, in with a flow which is continuous others only talk about gyan however we have done so much amount of uh, uh, management training programs where people have said you need to be putting yourself in the other person's shoes but we have never done that and to be able to do that such a thing one needs a agile mindset and therefore deepa to do this uh, activity of uh, finding out what challenges are there in a uh, in the in, through blue ocean one needs to have an agile mindset to look at all perspectives and then look at what the risks and the chances are and that is covered in the market analysis is what i would like to uh, tell you and answer that uh, question then there is one more which says what would be the one takeaway on blue ocean concerning indian manufacturing post covid see i think the biggest takeaway for indian manufacturing is it's high time that we start talking about creating our own products indian manufacturing has been into contract manufacturing for decades now and we have only competed by giving in cost reductions we have not really comp we not competed with anybody by really increasing some core competence where we really innovated the way we manufacture a particular product by going in for let us say automation or some kind of a closed loop control or or some uh, iot solutions for remote monitoring iot solutions for feedback control we have done nothing of that kind all we have done is contract manufacturing cost reduction and we should come away from that that's the biggest lesson covid has taught us we should come away from that this is the time we've got some time anyway the industry is uh, slow invest your resources invest your brains together to come up with products for your company don't continue with the contract manufacturing is what i want to say that's the biggest lesson i would uh, like to uh, communicate then uh, which businesses go into remote uh, working and control i think chandramouli we spoke about that then raghavendra kamath asks uh, honda created scooter market hope it is a blue ocean uh i am not sure see uh, definitely honda created a scooter market uh, because they had a product of this in and they just brought it to india and this is uh, not a blue ocean but it's an extension of a blue ocean because uh, they basically came to a market where the product was not known see if i spoke to you in the earlier slides i showed, said there are totally three uh, four types of market the existing market the market of uh, uh, to close non customers who are refusing to buy your product but they are buying somebody's product and the third one is market of people who are uh, not using that particular mode of transport for their uh, need uh, that would be the case of uh, honda and the fourth one is who never know that there is anything like that which existed at all that also could be in the case of honda so the, the third market would be people who wanted to use the public transport for example right or maybe they wanted to use the scooter uh, the 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 the, the uh, a uh, indian uh, bajaj scooter or or uh, some other lambretta was there also right a lambretta scooter where you had to uh, change the gear it was much more difficult not that comfortable to drive so they were the people who shifted to honda but honda per se as a as a product existed already long time back so i would say it's an extension of the blue ocean which already was defined and this is a blue ocean which went on for a long time it's not something which is a short term blue ocean like a florist or uh, the online uh, uh, classes which you are talking about the last one is a long question that is uh, sugata sagar uh, his question is uh, there is there will be massive uh, discrimination of economic uh, resources dissemination of economic resources this is sinking uh, ladder make opportunities for later lateral entries will increase uh, home automation and comfort including like uh, likes of bomb virus shelter survival insurance gold in market to increase living off the grid to increase yeah definitely i think he basically mentioned uh, that uh, I, i think you could possibly speak about that if the others are okay i'll answer the questions and give it back get back to you mr uh, sugata sagar then saloni uh, paranjape asked uh, thank you for the session while using blue ocean strategy is there a trap of equating creative destruction with uh, market uh, construction if yes how do you work over oh, that is very very nice thanks a lot uh, saloni for asking this question in my opinion that is absolutely a no go when i say no go i am from engineering go and no go go is where you can it's a plug gauge you know where you have a diameter to check one side it enters the other side it doesn't enter it should then it is the product is okay so this is a no go situation because you cannot create a blue ocean by uh, eroding something that is not a blue ocean at all 
uh, that is cheating <laughs> or, or maybe it is not uh, cheating maybe a very very strong word it would be basically going backwards in the civilization blue oceans have always created evolution of the society the the, the society has evolved so therefore such a thing would never uh, should should not happen and uh, that is not the objective and we should not really focus that and of course that can be that will be avoided because the customer is the king customer will definitely not accept such a, a solution at all the next one is uh, vishwanath but uh, uh, due to this covid uh, if we want to execute our idea investment will be a problem it might be required huge amount see i i, I don't want to talk about that uh, uh, i i am a startup uh, entrepreneur i have always had a problem with the finance i just pray god and it is really somehow somewhere something is working and then we are continuing uh, i would imagine that if there is a good idea uh, finance should not be a problem uh, I, I i used to keep telling that in uh, in, in 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 my company uh, bosch and now i see that uh, personally somewhere somebody will help because uh, people in the world are interested in uh, uh, evolving the society so there are a lot of people who want to do that it's important that you have an idea which is very good and uh, finance should not be a problem i don't think that should really deter you in getting a good idea and and going behind that then we have vishnu asking uh, how do you identify key advantages to place do how to be under compared to other webinars how do you identify key advantages to place to how to be under blue ocean see i think one of the key differentiators uh, where i feel uh, this is my perspective okay i'm i'm an inventor so i can talk all bullshit so please pardon me for that uh, one is uh, doha webinars are 100% uh, 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 interactive uh, today in this webinar i am mainly talking and you are all listening uh, it's not the case with doha webinar 100% interactive that is number one number two we have not had any single webinar where participants have not got very very fundamental takeaways i am not talking about superficial answers or whatever it is that is second takeaway and the third one is since we uh, our our programs are repetitive ones it's not one off programs and uh, our paid programs are uh, mainly for transforming for really getting that change uh, induced so we ask the participant to talk about what improvement he did or what did he actually do and the actions which are defined by the participants are by themselves nobody does that for them so therefore the accountability is extremely high and uh, the doing is very very high so therefore i feel that would be different with the uh, interaction second is uh, generating very very relevant insights we are not teaching anything at all like i said we only work in the affective domain to kindling the desire to learn in fact with one of our customers uh, he asked me what do you do you 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 don't know you are you're new to this field what do you do i said i don't do anything i am not a content expert i am not a subject expert neither any of us are subject experts we only kindle the fire in the belly uh, the fire in the belly gets kindled gets lit with do how that's the big differentiator vishnu vardhan then mr chandramouli asks a very innovative approach to engage webinar participants if nano car was successful would that be a good example of uh, blue ocean see i don't say that nano was unsuccessful uh, mr chandramouli i felt nano was definitely a success but uh, the unfortunate reality was that uh, uh, the path that they took to uh, get success there was not something very good uh, this is something similar uh, in, in in more or less in the same direction as uh, what uh, uh, saloni uh, paranjipi had asked uh, see uh, when we are trying to do something by cu cutting cost corners everywhere uh, that is not really going to result in a, a robust blue ocean it may be something which is available physically but it will die down uh, saloni answering to your question chandramouli has already replied that nano car could have been a blue ocean had the nano strategy would not have been to really uh, undercut prices undercut costs everywhere in fact i know a lot of suppliers who supply to nano even from from bosch we supplied our systems to nano it was extremely challenging uh, we had to really and then there were discussions saying that look you give this at a lower cost and some other product will compensate for you that's absolute bullshit the business doesn't run like that my my entire product structure if it changes then i'm in doldrums if i've given uh, and and uh, many companies do that you know it's a very very popular uh, uh, purchasing strategy but i am dead against that because if you do that then it's 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 basically heavily disadvantages for the company which is buying and also the company which is selling that's what happened in that case that won't work thanks a lot uh, mauli and uh, thanks uh, uh, for uh, giving an example for saloni's question too then we have got uh, bharat uh, shrivalli uh, does blue ocean mean only new products or different product no not at all blue ocean can definitely be an add on to an existing product 
uh, absolutely not uh, not a new product at all because most of the cases it will just be an add-on because you would not be able to really create such new wonders continuously let us be realistic so what would happen is in after all this activity you possibly add on a small uh, small value to your existing product and that becomes the blue horn, blue ocean for the next three months and after that you add on one more small limit that's what apple does you know if you see all the features are not released in one go you have a small add-on that gives you the blue ocean and the edge in the market that's good enough uh, is geo a blue ocean i don't think so at all because geo went on to a strategy of uh, gaining uh, market by undercoating uh, same as uh, oyo rooms uh, they they did that and by doing that uh, one they, they acquired the customers second is they really ran into a huge doldrums if you see the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, debt of zio or any other telecom company zio especially is, is phenomenal phenomenal uh, i was really shocked it runs into 10000s of uh, uh, crores it's not uh, not small at all it's a huge amount huge debt and and by doing that you you are basically destroying the market that's not blue ocean that's not evolution is it evolution to kill your competitors <clears throat> at the sake of killing yourself it's not evolution at all it's totally against any uh, uh, basic uh, uh, business ethics in my opinion uh, does blue ocean uh, only uh, where was that uh, yeah geo then after the thank you for the session learn something new today thank you so much uh, mr subramanya need to think out of the box for uh, of course mr chandrashekar vk kinger talks about that need to think out of the box for blue ocean very true absolutely true and finally i would uh, if you are all interested ask mr sugata sagar if he is still there he had some interesting ideas of uh, cross discussion he can possibly share that i would just uh, give you the mic mr sugata sagar would you be interested in uh, uh, sharing anything uh, mr sugata sagar are you there i have unmuted you if you want you can unmute and then uh, share your thoughts otherwise uh, i would ask uh, sagar or vivek to uh, answer any of these uh, to comment anything additional or we can close the webinar uh yeah good evening to all of you i am sure you must have uh, felt a difference with this knowledge series of seminars which takes one particular topic and talks about it in detail in a didactic manner but we have one more series which is the do how game series which we play every single day and that's what mr dinkar was also suggesting where we talk 15% of the time and you people talk 7 85% of the time and that's where you develop your agile mindset so uh, i would suggest you to look up to the same thing which uh, was presented do how uh, services and look for free webinars and in there it is very much there and once you get into this habit of sharpening your thinking on a regular basis your agile thinking will be developed so i encourage today you experience the knowledge series i would love you to experience the do how series also uh, in coming days thank you sugata yeah. you are there sugata mr sugata sagar would be interested in speaking or shall i close the seminar because he had some good ideas of uh, cross pollination okay so with that uh, uh, thanks a lot please uh, do answer our uh, survey questionnaire at the end of the webinar to get to know, for us to know how it was and what was your uh, impression and uh, keep coming back uh, and thanks a lot Hello. Uh, nice evening yeah yeah, yeah. this Sugata, is sorry, uh, yes sir yeah, good evening sir am i audible sir yes very much yes. please go on please go on. Uh, yes sir sorry i wanted to just share my views here uh, way back in the year uh, 2000 when i was doing engineering starting uh we have seen that uh, dot com burst lot of people had invested uh that on e-commerce okay anticipating uh some kind of a sales which we are presently seeing uh pre-covid era the like the amazon the flip card all such things uh unfortunately things did not happen the e-commerce then way back then and lot of uh, companies the new companies which came in uh, place uh were had to close down uh what happened billions and trillions of money invested on business okay they had to close down and the same company the shareholding uh, other people were able to purchase it at a very lower rate okay if you can clearly see the scenario 2000 is the year when the economic growth worldwide started uh, to take a next jump technology wise everywhere there was going to be growth similarly as i see now is the time when such a second leap we are about to witness now 
world wide everywhere the share market has come down okay implies that even somebody with half the amount of money can uh, gain the shares of any of the companies of his choice what i try to imply here is there is going to be a massive dissemination of resources lot of people thousands currently maybe even more uh, in couple of months are going to be no more due to this uh, virus situation what will happen to their economic resource it is going to come down to in within their family to their younger generation most likely okay the dissemination is going to happen implies that there is going to be a massive churn out in the industry wherein people with 25 years of uh, sorry at the age of 25 okay the kind of a work what they do in office probably in a year or two will be doing something uh, what our people are doing now at the age of 35 or 40 okay massive openings are going to come up because lot of people would have uh, crossed the bandwidth for the need to work because of this uh, uh, economic uh, dissemination first thing second thing uh, as you mentioned sir uh, the webinar and the co concept of knowledge dissemination this is going to bring in a pool of extremely huge pool of resources inside the market okay that was my second point third point is uh, this lockdown uh, has definitely created lot of people uh, they are not able to work they have become lazy there are certain segment true but the churning has happened lot of creative innovative ideas uh, which is already taken shape okay people never had time earlier now post this lockdown when things are going to open up people are going to come with amazing things to the market and uh, we are going to see a huge jump everywhere every field okay so thank you so much uh, so thank you so thank much you, for sir. ending it on a positive note uh, mr uh, sugata sagar thank you once again thank you everyone and uh, have a nice evening uh, like i said please do uh, answer our survey and uh, keep coming back to our uh, knowledge series and looking forward to meeting you again and when you come to the webinar uh, on a daily basis i would be more than happy to talk to you and then uh, we can get to know much better than what we do today thanks so much have a nice evening goodbye